Alright, welcome to this Dreamweaver tutorial. My name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. Uh, this tutorial is for people that are new to web design and have uh, never used Dreamweaver before. Alright, in this topic we're going to be looking at something called a tag selector. Now it sounds kind of code language but they're quite important to building a website. The overall term is called a selector and in part of this tutorial course we're going to look at various types of selectors. The first one is called a tag selector. And a tag selector is just a really simple way of telling browsers and Google um, what the information on your page is. So we're going to look at it first and then it'll become clearer. So to start with we're going to look at a tag selector called an H1. Now um, an H1 is just uh, short for heading one and it's essentially telling people like Google search engines what the most important part of your page is. So um, in this case, we're going to make this word here welcome, our H1. So if I highlight it, by default, it's got, it's called this thing called a P tag. A P tag, think of a P tag is your body copy. Everything that is just normal text is something called P tag, and that's short for paragraph. Okay, so everything you copy and paste into Dreamweaver gets wrapped up in this tag called paragraph. What I'd like to do is change it from paragraph to heading one. Okay, and what you'll notice down here is that my uh, tag here has changed from a P tag to an H1. And you'll also notice some of the defaults change. Okay, it's gone to this big black Times New Roman um, size here. Okay, and that's the defaults. We're going to look at changing that in a later course. Okay, but for the moment, this is telling something like Google what the most important bit of information on your page is, your heading is this word welcome and this happens quite a bit in web design we don't want the word welcome because that's not describing our page particularly well so in this course we're going to be looking at creating a little retro camper website okay so for people hiring camper vans but they're, they're kind of v, uh, vw combi style so instead of the word welcome is we're going to be putting in vintage camper rentals okay i've made sure that i'm really clear in my heading about what this website does. So Google comes along and checks what your H1 is and says, okay, your H1, your most important bit of information on this page is the words vintage camper rentals. Okay, so that will help you rank for this particular word. Having things like welcome and welcome to our site will tell Google that your most important part of this page is welcome to your site. And obviously it's not really what you want to rank for. Okay, so you want your website ranking for the right keyword. So we're gonna change this one is vintage camper rentals. Okay. Now down here I've got this one here, booking your camper today. Okay. Ideally you should have one H1 per page and you should have, um, say I've got another one that is still quite important, it's more than body copy, it's a little bit more important. I'm going to use instead of the P tag, you can see here, it's going to be this heading 2. Okay. So now you can see down here it's the heading 2 tag. Okay, so that's called an H2. Okay, so we've got an H1 tag, and we've got a H2 tag, and we've got lots of P tags okay, applied. Now we've been working in Design View. Now Design View is the safe view, and I guess uh, the nice easy way to get started, but you're gonna have to work in Code View as well. So we're gonna work in the Split View, so we can see part design and part full Code View. So Split View just cuts it down the middle, and we can see either side. Now what you'll notice in the Code View is this is what this is the code that's being created for your website and this is what the users see so I see this title at the top here and what the code view sees is see I can see it's got this h1 tag now tags have an open and also a close you can see over here here's my slash h1 so in between these two Google knows that these words are my heading one you can see down here these words are my H2s, okay? My second most heading, my heading, um, second most important heading. You can see lots of P tags. Here's my P tag, it opens and closes there. Okay, so the P tag opens and P tag closes. So as we go through this course, we'll get more, we'll get better and better at looking at tags and better and better at looking at code view. Now code view can look a bit daunting when you're new. Okay, so you can kind of keep working on this design view, but you need to get comfortable on this side as well. Okay, because what we can do is we can do things like this. I would like to change my H2 to, say, an H4. Okay, 
Now I could highlight it here and change it down here, and that obviously would be nice and easy. But you need to be aware that you could change it on this side as well. So here's my H2 my open and my close. So over here I'm going to change the H2 to an H4. Okay. And I can't forget to change the end as well. So the beginnings in H4 and the bottoms in H4. And what happens is I can do one of two things. I can click over the side or I can hit this refresh button. They both do the same thing. But if I click over here, you can see this is now updated to an H4. You can see down the bottom here in my tag selector, it tells me that it's an H4. So I'm telling Google that this is the most important heading. There is no H2, no H3, and this is the fourth most important heading. Okay, before we finish up, let's change this one back to an H2. So I've highlighted it all here, and I'm going to change it back to an H2. And you'll see over here in the code view, it changes to an H2 as well. So for your website, every page okay, needs at least one H1. Okay, and this tells Google, and the way it ranks, that this is the most important information on my page, or the most, and this is, helps describe to Google what your page is about. Okay, and this should be unique for every single page. So every single page should have an H1, and it should be different from every other page. Okay. H2s can be important as well. Okay. If you've got a lot of text and you really need to help clarify what the difference is in terms of headings, okay, there's not a lot of text on this particular page, but um, this H1 here is definitely required. H2s can be if you've got enough text. When you get down to things like H3s, 4s, and 5s, and 6s, um, actually, once you get past an H3, there's not a lot of value in Google knowing what the extra headings are. Okay. So um, definitely an H1, H2 if you've got enough text okay, to warrant it. And when you get start talking about H4s and H5s, I wouldn't worry too much about them. They don't help you in your rankings particularly well. They're a bit, um, they lack a little bit of strength down at those really low heading sizes. Okay, so. Alright, that'll be the end of this tutorial, let's move on to the next one.